Hi guys, it's Miss M back with another video. And this week we are going to be reviewing and you'll be reading some different examples of dramas, um, poems, and proses. So today we're gonna to be focusing on dramas. Now out of all the three, it seemed like most, the majority of all of us in the classroom really loved dramas, or another word is a play. I know we kind of kept using those two words, a play and a drama back and forth, but it's called a drama. So we're gonna be taking some notes. I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about dramas, what makes a drama a drama. I'll give you some examples and some little bit back history about it. So if you ever need to stop this video, go ahead and stop it so you can take down the notes. All right, but let's get started. So it's important to know that a drama, just to begin with, is a performance that is based on a story or based on stories in general. Now these stories could have some fictional, um, they're usually fictional, meaning that they're, you know, made up or not real, but they can also be nonfiction. There could be some nonfiction elements to the drama. For example, if there was a historical event that happened that the playwright who writes these plays, we'll talk about them in a bit, wanted to add into it or wanted to be that setting of that drama, then that would be the nonfiction part to it. Okay, but a lot of dramas are really um, fiction. They are based on just some stories that may or may not have really had happened, things like that. Now, it's important to know that drama means action in Greece, in Greek. The reason why it's in Greek is because the first dramas were made and put on in Greece during the BC era. Okay, so since the BC era, which is very early, early, early on in the civilization, up until where we are in 2020, that whole entire time frame, that big timeline, that big amount of, um, um, oh my goodness, that big amount of time between BC and today's world, there's been dramas being put on by everyone in different countries, in different places, there's been dramas all over. And the purpose of a drama is to entertain the audience and also to use a form of expression for the play writer to express how they're feeling and to express some emotions that could be connective and true to the audience who is watching. So it's important to know that all dramas have the following. So as I mentioned earlier, a playwright is someone who writes the play, writes the drama. They are the person behind the script. The script is a written version of the play to be performed. And usually, remember, we talked about scripts are very, very thick in a drama. And it has all the lines, all the dialogue, which are sentences and phrases that these actors have to say for their character. And the script, basically, as it says, it's just the whole written out version of the play. Now, the play will be acted and performed on stage for the audience to see, but the actors have to study this huge, thick script and have to rehearse and memorize all of their lines to be able to perform and act it out for the audience. So a dialogue is the sentences or the phrases that their actors must memorize and know to say for their characters. Now that means that their character could have only five lines or it could mean that their character has over 152, if not more. That just means that that actor has to know all the dialogue for their character. Now there is something called stage directions, which we know is the movement or the instruction that an actor must do for their role. And usually it's written in the script. So if it's telling the actor that they need to be laughing at something, it'll be in parentheses and it'll say, I'd say her name is Isabel, and Isabel, in parentheses, should be laughing and pointing at someone uh, across the way. So that actor knows, okay, when it gets to this part of the script, I should be laughing and pointing out, and because that's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. If it says I have to walk across the stage, I better walk across the stage. It's just telling the actors exactly what movement, what instructions they need to do to bring their character to life. Dialogue is not enough to bring that character to life. They need to be able to make them seem real. They wanna make their character seem like a real true person. So there's gotta be movement, there's gotta be instruction. They're giving them feelings and actions that they have to do. Now the narrator is the person who tells um, the audience, tells the people in the play exactly what is happening in the play. They're a pretty big role. They kinda keep the play moving along. 
And without them, you know, they could, as we learned in the classroom, you know, they could be giving us some back information that we don't really know a lot about, and they'll be filling in little pieces by pieces. So their job is, you know, when there's some gaps, some spaces between parts of the play, the job of the narrator is to kind of fill the audience in and tell them, you know, this is what's happening. And it also tells the actors, okay, we're moving on to the next part, so better get ready. And then, of course, we have a cast of characters. We have the costumes because each character is different from one another, just like people are. We're pretty different from each other. So those characters are gonna have some costumes. Now, let's say if the boy is a skater, he's gonna be probably having a skateboard with him, a helmet, maybe if he's an athlete, you know, a baseball bat, baseball glove, soccer ball. If she's a dancer, she's gonna have dance stuff. If it's a mother, you know, we're gonna dress him up in some motherly kind of clothing, that kind of thing. And props are just little, um, they're kind of like costumes, not really, but they are, you know, the actual ballet slippers, the baseball bat, the baby that's in the arms, a fake baby. They kind of help bring the character more to life. It's more of an accessory to the costume. So if the boy's a baseball player or a soccer player, he's gonna be wearing baseball uniform, soccer uniform, and the props would be a soccer ball or a baseball glove or cleats or something like that. It's just an accessory in addition to the costumes. Now I have printed out for us an example of a drama suit that you can really, really see and understand what it looks like. So this whole thing right here, as you can see, it's called the script. This is all the script. Here's our narrator telling us, you know, after a week of study in drama in school, they're discussing their day. It's gonna let the audience and let the cast members know exactly what's going on. You have our actors, Jessica, Tyler, and Lely. In parentheses, you see right here, taking a bite of a sandwich, laughing, smiling. Those are all stage directions. And all of this is dialogue. Now we know that we, in writing, we put dialogue in quotations because that's our way of writing. That's how you write dialogue in a story. But when it comes to a play, there is no need because plays are all done with voice. So we don't need to have any quotation marks there. Now there are different forms of dramas, meaning there's different types of dramas, like a play, reader's theater, which you can act out in the classroom, a skit, which is like a smaller version of a play, Operas are plays and dramas. They are sung. There is no talking. It is all singing. Musicals, which we talked about, musicals on Broadway in Tampa and New York City. You know, there's dialogue, there is music, there is dancing. That's a musical. And a monologue is usually a story, a drama that is just told by one person and they're just speaking the entire time. All right. So this was all the elements of a drama, some history about what drama is, some information, some examples. And until the next video, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.